You've all seen one of these before. It's a bike wheel. When you spin a bike wheel, it turns into a gyroscope, which does some pretty strange things with physics. What you may not have seen before, though, is what happens when you give a gyroscope to an ice skater. The forces generated by the gyroscope can be used to turn an ice skater left and right as they glide along the ice. The same mechanical forces can also be used to stabilize robots. So today, we're going to be looking at how machines can balance with everything from gyroscopes to gimbals like this one and robots of the future. So how can robots balance? Well, one of the tools that they can use is a gyroscope, like our bike wheel here. The gyroscopic force means that the bike wheel is staying upright while it's spinning. If the bike wheel stops spinning, gravity pulls it down like this. So when it spins, it seems to be defying gravity. But actually, that gravitational force is pulling the bike wheel around like this instead. So how does that work? The gyroscopic effect is quite complex, so we're going to simplify a little bit and just think about it on a flat surface. For that, we're going to go back to the ice rink with our friend the rubber duck. So the duck is moving forwards. It has a momentum in the forwards direction. But as the force comes in at right angles to it, and the duck doesn't actually move at right angles to its original movement, it goes off in a direction that's a product of the original momentum and the new force. It's exactly the same thing with our bike wheel. Let's put our duck up here. But instead of a flat path, our duck's going to take a circular path around the bike wheel. Our 90 degree force is going to be gravity, which wants to pull the wheel like this. But the combination of that force and the momentum going around in a circle pulls our bike wheel this way. Now, what was happening to the duck is happening at every point around the bike wheel, kind of like there's an infinite number of ducks going all the way around. So at every point, gravity is not pulling the bike wheel down, it's pushing it around at 90 degrees to that. So instead of falling over, our bike wheel will stay upright. And this is useful for our robots, because if they have a gyroscope inside them, that can give them some stability. And also because it stays upright, it can help the robot to tell which way is up. If we want to know what direction our robot is moving, we need to use something called an accelerometer. Now your phone probably has an accelerometer, which allows it to know which way is up. Now the accelerometer in your phone uses a very small chip, but you can imagine it working a little bit like a system of three springs. So you've got springs in the X, Y, and Z axis. Now, if each of these springs had a weight on the end of it, as you moved around, they would push and pull on one another. By measuring the force of this pushing and pulling, you can determine what direction your machine is moving in. So we've looked at different tools we can use to help our robots balance. But for us to use them, our robot needs a controller, which is a bit like a brain in a human body. Last year, we looked at how we can balance using the fluid in our ears but my ears on their own aren't going to stop me from falling over. For that, my ears need to send information to my brain, which processes this and tells my muscles what to do to keep me balanced. Exactly the same thing is happening in our robots, with the controller taking in information and sending out information to the motors. So here we can see the controller in action. This is a three-axis gimbal. And as we move it, the accelerometers detect that. They send that information to the controller, and the controller can then tell the motors to apply the exact opposite force to keep the camera stable. So how far have we come in getting robots to balance like humans do? Well, this is the best that we can achieve with robots at the moment. A pretty impressive engineering feat. But one of the big differences between humans and robots is that we can learn, our brains can adapt. Perhaps in the future, robots will be able to as well. Research going on at the University of Bristol is looking into adaptive controllers. My research is about designing an adaptive controller for an unmanned aerial vehicle. I'm testing out the controller that I've just designed on the Quanzer helicopter. So I'm giving the Quanzer a step up input and then step down input repeatedly. It is tracking the command, but it's not tracking the command well. I've also designed another controller the one that I'm going to test out now is called adaptive control. It first starts bad, which is fine. And then you can see that the response is improving over time. And you would notice already that there's no more oscillation like what happens before with the badly tuned controller. It's similar to how a human brain works to make correction based on the mistakes that you make. It will work well in simulation and in theory but in real life, there are so many other challenges involved. 
uh, there are so many work needs to be done in order to have an, this ideal controller that works for every system. Check out our ice skating videos from last year for more on angular momentum and how humans balance. And for more science every week, click subscribe. Thanks for watching.